Mr. Rabbit. And it's time for another boring science activity explanation. Um, we started conducting our energy labs with topic five. Uh, the first lab that we did was a conduction activity. Um, you had an instrument that looked similar to this. This is a diagram from the Regents. This instrument is called a calorimeter and it's an instrument that's used to study or investigate heat transfer. Um, you had a heat transfer bar which was made out of aluminum. It's a solid. That's how the heat energy went from the hot cup to the cold cup. Now the area that has a higher temperature is known as the heat source and the heat source will always lose energy. Okay, the colder region that's going to gain energy is referred to as the heat sink. So you're looking, there's a difference in temperature, and as long as there's a difference in temperature between objects, you know that heat energy is going to flow by one of three methods, conduction, convection, or radiation. This activity is definitely conduction because you've got a solid metal bar and the energy is going to be transferred by molecular collisions where the molecules that are being heated by the hot water are going to vibrate, collide with each other, and from molecule to molecule that energy will be passed from the hot cup to the cold cup. One of the you know, important concepts of this is the difference between an open system and a closed system. If you're looking at this diagram, you see the initial temperature is 40 and 10. Okay, When we do the lab, when we've done the activity, you'll see that there is a much larger drop in temperature from the hot cup than the gain from the cold cup. Some of the energy gets transferred to other heat sinks. So because we have a non-insulated bar, and because energy is lost through the walls of the containers, you know, through the thermometer, the heat that we see, the drop in temperature from the heat source, is going to be less than the rise in temperature from the heat sink. So this diagram and what we do in class is really an example of an open system. In an open system, some energy is exchanged with the environment. Now, because energy is exchanged in the environment, you don't see the same change in energy or the same change in temperature. So in this open system, the hot cup will lose more energy than the cold cup gains. Now, if you could create what's known or referred to as a closed system, in a closed system, it's like a magic box. Nothing gets in and nothing gets out. So the characteristics of a closed system, which never really happens, um, in a closed system, no energy is exchanged with the surroundings or the environment. So all the heat lost by the source would equal the heat gained by the sink. Now, if they give you a question about a closed system, what you essentially want to do is you're going to average the temperatures. Okay, so with this one, assuming you have the same amount of water in both containers, you would take the 40 degrees Celsius and the 10 degrees Celsius. You would take those two values the total temperature that you have is 50 degrees Celsius. You do 50 divided by 2, so your final temperature would be 25. 
okay, you'd see that 25 is now exactly between your 40 and your 10. So if you add 15 degrees to 10, you get 45. If you subtract 15 degrees Celsius from 40, you would get 25, so that's right in the middle. So when you have a closed system, whatever is lost by the source is gained by the sink. All right, here is the data that we collected the other day in class. All right, the vernier temperature probes are far more sensitive and far more accurate than anything we could measure. So you'll see this class did 21 minutes of temperature readings for the hot cup and the cold cup. Okay, looking at this, you have 91.2 down to 69.8. So our hot cup or our heat source source saw a drop of 21.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, the cold cup started at 8.6, but only went up to 16.1. So our cold cup had a change of 7.5 degrees. It increased. So the heat source lost energy, the heat sink gained energy, but there was significantly more lost by the heat source than by the heat sink. So this would definitely be an example of an open system. Now, you're asked to do the rate of change for both of them for the first 10 minutes. I would divide it in half, label it hot cup, cold cup, write the formulas. All right. Now, for both of these, we're looking at the first 10 minutes of data. All right. So when I'm looking at the hot cup, it started at 91.2 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, it was at 79.2 degrees Celsius. So I'd find the change in temperature there. All right, the cold cup after 10 minutes was 11.9 degrees Celsius. Initially, the starting temperature was 8.6 degrees Celsius. Now, you should definitely use a calculator for this. So if I turn our calculator on, 91.2 minus 79.2, there was a change of 12 degrees Celsius in 10 minutes. You don't need a calculator for that, hopefully. And you're getting 1.2 degrees Celsius per minute. All right, on the cold cup side, we're doing 11.9 minus 8.6. Okay, so that had an increase of 3.3 .3 degrees Celsius over 10 minutes. Dividing by 10, you just shift the decimal. We're going to round it to the nearest tenth. So this would be a 0.3 degrees Celsius per minute increase. So definitely the hot cup cooled significantly faster than the cold cup warmed. Now, I've already drawn the points for the lab. Okay, so we're looking at this. I'm gonna connect the points for the cold cup I'm going to label this as the cold cup. And you'll see, you know, there's very slight change. If you wanted to, you could highlight this to make it a little bit more obvious. If I go to the hot cup, you'd see there was a much bigger change. The slope of this line is definitely significantly greater than the slope of the other line. So after I plot the 21 points, I connect them with a smooth curve. I label it as the hot cup. If you want to make it stand out a little bit, I could sit here and sketch the graph. 
Now, these lines are not perfectly straight. Uh, that happens because there's a change in rate if there's a big difference in the temperature between the two, like initially the hot cup and the cold cup were far apart, which means the rate of energy flow was faster. Over time, as these values get closer together, that means that the speed or the rate at which the temperature flow is going to occur is going to decrease. So that's essentially what your graph should look like. Uh, we actually left one for 48 hours um, and we'll see what happens over a longer time period but for now that's sort of what we have gotten for 21 minutes of data I'm not going to discuss every single question with you but there are a couple of key questions I'd like to discuss from the discussion questions um, one of them asked to compare the amount of energy lost by one cup to the amount of energy gained by the other one obviously when we look at this one, you know, the hot cup lost more energy. It had a larger change in temperature than the cold cup gained. So that's telling you that it's an open system. There's a question that asks about the rate of heat loss. Okay. Um, the rate of heat loss decreases over time. As we ran the experiment, the hot cup was losing energy, but it was losing it as a slower rate. The reason is the temperature difference became less over time. Alright, um, if we left it standing for 24 hours, what would happen? I hope you can infer that. Three different ways to modify the equipment. Well, we're losing a significant amount of heat energy to the atmosphere. One thing you could try to do is insulate the system so less heat energy is lost to the environment. By insulating it, if less heat energy is going into the air, then you know we might get more heat energy into the cup. You could actually design an experiment in order to test that. Um, you could change the material. Okay, we happen to use aluminum, but there are other metals besides aluminum to something like copper or gold that might be a better conductor. You know, realistically, if you re-ran the experiment and could find another material, you could see if that, you know, changes the results the way that you're hoping for. Um, you could change the length of the bar. If you made the bar shorter, less of the bar would be in contact with the environment and if less of it's in contact with the environment you should have less energy lost to the surroundings which means more would be able to go from the heat source to the heat sink. Um, we've already discussed why the rate of change is different because the rate depends on the difference in temperature. Um, if this was a closed system you know in a closed system that the amount of energy lost by the source equals the amount of energy gained by the sink. I hope this has been helpful and that this will assist you in getting through doing this activity. Take care.